Welcome to the Museum of Contemporary Art Chicago. My name is Jeremy, and I'm the manager of school programs here at the MCA. Today, we're going to look at an exhibition called Alien vs. Citizen. In this exhibition, we'll explore what it feels like to be welcome or unwelcome, and think about some of the structures and relationships in our world that make us feel that way. The art we'll see in Alien vs. Citizen is contemporary art. Saying that art is contemporary just means that it was made recently in our time. Old historical art is special and important because through it we can learn about the past. But the art of our time is just as important because through it we can see the present in new ways. One of the early patrons of this museum, Gerald S. Eliot, said of contemporary art, what attracts me is a certain awesomeness and presence which relates to the spirit of our time, to the human condition, the ups, the downs, the disruption, the chaos, the ambivalence. We'll be approaching art that way, not by trying to dig into its history or the biography of artists. Instead, we'll look for ways that art can inspire us to engage with ourselves, one another, and the world we share. We'll look at four artworks in Alien vs. Citizen and consider the many different ways we decide who belongs. Some of the activities we'll be inviting to do will take more time than we'll provide. Feel free to pause the video or revisit them later. In addition, we'll be sharing some instructional footage from the Mid-American Council for Authorization to help you figure out your worth. Take a look at Inigo Manglano Ovalle's assigned identities. The prints all look the same, but each individual is unique and different. Do any of the people in these prints remind you of people that you know? Each of these prints depicts an individual seeking amnesty from U.S. Immigration and Naturalization Services. That means that these people came into the United States without official permission, and at the time of these photos, they were asking the government to let them stay. They look like ID cards, but the space where all the information would normally go is blank. Why do you think Inigo decided to leave all of the information that would normally go on ID cards off of these? Would you feel differently about these people if all of that information was here? Things like birthday, height, nation of origin, weight? Have you ever had someone ask you whether or not you were allowed to be somewhere? Maybe they stopped you and asked you for your hall pass or an ID card like this. Think about a time when someone treated you like a stranger. And think about a time when someone treated you like a friend. Find a friend or a family member and talk about that. Talk about your interactions with people in authority. Share one time when someone treated you like an intruder or a stranger. Then, share another time when someone treated you like a guest or a friend. Talk together about those experiences. Look at Ramiro Gomez's painting called Paul Smith's Door, Los Angeles. At a glance, this painting almost looks abstract. 
like a simple arrangement of shapes and colors instead of a recognizable street scene. Take a moment and try to appreciate the colors and shapes before even considering what the painting depicts. Paul Smith is a luxury clothing brand. Its Los Angeles store is located in an expensive shopping district. It's the kind of place you might expect to see celebrities buying $300 t-shirts. In this painting, there are a couple notable things that interrupt the building's clean shapes and splashy color. The signature style Paul Smith brand logo, which sort of looks like an artist's signature on the painting, and the worker with the leaf blower, who I can tell you is not Paul Smith himself. In a typical image of a storefront like this, you might expect to see the designer or maybe a model or a flood of hip customers. Why do you think Romero Gomez decided to put a landscape worker right in the middle of this painting instead? There is an imbalance here in this painting that also exists in the world. We all rely on each other's work to live well, but not all kinds of work are equally celebrated, respected, and valued. Let's pause for a moment to reflect on all of the labor that makes our lives possible. Wherever you are, find a stable position where you're comfortable. Take a few deep breaths, in deeply and out slowly. Think for a moment about all the things that make our lives easier and more pleasurable than our great-grandparents' lives. Imagine all of the people who work to make those things possible. Instead of celebrities or brands, try to really see those people who do the daily work of caring for our world. See the people in your life who do that work, but also the thousands and millions you may never know. In this moment, find gratitude for those things in your life and offer that gratitude to those who make our world possible. How else can we better value them? For this next activity, you're going to need a piece of paper and a writing tool. Find a comfortable seated place to work. While sitting, begin to relax your body and notice your breath. Be present with yourself. Think about who you are and the things you've experienced the last few years. Think about your body and its journey and how you communicate with each other. In this moment of reflection, write a list of all the things you're proud of yourself for. Things you've overcome, moments of celebration, relationships, etc. I have 10 things that I'm proud of myself for, that I have memories of. Um, 10, 10 is good, right? Yeah. Now, whatever the 
number you have is great. Okay, so mine happens to be 10. Um, okay, now go back into your list and make sure they're complete sentences. Go back and check all the punctuations and grammar and make sure that it actually reads really smartly. Wait, what do I, what do I do with this next? That, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, these are personal. How am I supposed to make them itemized? I mean, like, that's weird. That, that doesn't make any sense. Go through your poignant memories all your important challenges and itemize them from highest priority to lowest priority. Phase one. If you wrote no in form three, skip this phase. Go through the list putting a star in the items that could help you elevate your position in general. Please scan and provide a wet signature. Phase three. If you wrote yes in form three, skip this phase and phase two. Download the app Hot or Not and post a picture of your documents. See how it rates. Note 2B. Wet is understood to include markers, pens, non-digital saliva, and hair product. Into the five great sayings. Saying four, not applicable in Zone G. Please call your local business chamber of commerce to write a letter of recommendation. Take a look at DPS number nine, Pomegranate by Eric Wesley. Status reports like this one are used to track someone's work hour by hour. Maybe you use something like this to stay organized or to report back to your teacher or your manager. Whether fair or not, productivity and efficiency, how quickly we get things done are common ways to measure someone's worth. How do you feel about that big splash of pomegranate that ruins an otherwise orderly page? I'm sure you've spilled something on an important document before. Does the messiness here drive you crazy or does it feel really satisfying? Leisure, playfulness, a little bit of chaos, all of these can feel like they don't belong in a society that values orderly work. The pressure to keep up, to keep track, can be a lot. Here, it looks like Eric did nothing today. Instead of checking boxes, he ate a pomegranate and made a mess. Deliberately doing such things is a great way to find yourself again if you ever get lost in the daily grind. Let's try to do that together. Get some paper, if you have some old worksheets or documents, great. Maybe consider some things that were destined for the waste bin. Then make a beverage, a cup of tea or coffee. Maybe find some messy fruit. Once you have all these things together, play instead of working. Do it mindfully. Use the liquid to wring, drip, or draw. Whatever feels right. It doesn't have to look like anything. Explore with the liquid like it's paint. Intentionally ignore whatever someone told you you're supposed to be doing.
Take a look at Untitled Black Love by Carrie Mae Weems. A romantic story unfolds image by image. Waiting, welcome, embrace. Love and affection are ways to express personal worth to each other. Their bodies tell the whole story. We matter to one another in ways that can transcend borders, duties, and boundaries. Look closely at this first photograph. Have you ever waited for someone like this, standing by a window or door? Now, instead of continuing to imagine what she's feeling in this moment, try to relate to what led to this moment, the invitation. Grab a pencil and a piece of paper. Imagine someone who stirs that kind of passion for you. Write a love letter to tell them all the reasons they belong with you. You don't have to send it, but you could. Thanks for visiting the Museum of Contemporary Art Chicago and the exhibition Alien vs. Citizen. I hope you found some inspiration and were able to connect to these works of art in new ways. The museum is always free for people 18 and under, students, and teachers. For more activities and experiences, or for more information about our learning programs, just visit mcachicago.org learn. <laughs>